You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is another episode about getting freedom from your stuff. And in particular, we're going to talk about decluttering and all the opportunities there are for selling your stuff that you don't need. And I'm really pleased to have a special guest, um, a listener who is really knowledgeable about this particular area. It's Georgia Levitt, who's the co-founder of ShareTown. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Jake. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's great, great to be able to talk to you. I wonder if we could start off maybe just by talking about a little bit about you. Um, could you say a little bit about how you got interested in, in this topic and, and how it relates to, to the business that you're involved with? Sure. Um, my background is in internet marketing, and I've done that for years. And uh, about four or five years ago, I decided to become an entrepreneur and work for myself. And in that process, I discovered working from home that I had a lot of assets in my house that I could convert into cash that would be a job for me why I was starting my own business. Right. So right. my yeah, my husband has always lived by a very minimalist uh, lifestyle. So it wasn't hard for him to say, to get on board and say, yeah, let's sell our stuff. And so... In the, in the U.S., most people, at least where I live in Las Vegas, most people use Craigslist. Right. And so I got online and I pretty much sold everything, like anything excess. Um, and this allowed me to stay home um, to start my career, to be with my children. I have four children. Right. And, uh, but it kind of gave me some flexibility and, and, uh, and it was a great way to bring in extra income Why I was doing my own business. And you know what I really noticed is as I did this, um, I felt freer. I didn't, wasn't bogged by, down by things that I owned, trying to get things repaired or uh, trying to find a place to fit it, to store it, why I wasn't using it. Right. And, you know, really it was amazing to me because I had never lived very minimalist up to this point. Um, the, I was looking at it from a financial point of view, mm. but but really uh, just the lifestyle, how much it freed us up. I was amazed by, you know, being able to park both our cars in the garage. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, not, not every American can do that. So, um, I, you know, I really took pride in that. That we had, you know, a place for all of our stuff. There wasn't anything just lingering around. If it didn't have a place, then we didn't need it, and. Uh, We've continued to do that probably even more in the last, uh, probably in the last year we've, we've recommitted ourselves to that. And, uh, you know, I, I see immense benefits. Right, right. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm also in the process at the moment of kind of selling everything that isn't nailed down, basically, and find, yes. finding it really liberating. And it's really interesting to hear that you're doing that also with four kids, because, because uh, I think <laughs> a lot of people experience, you know, having kids that that also, you know, can lead to even more stuff kind of accumulating. Yes. Um, do you find that this is something that you think is unusual compared to um, sort of other friends and, and, and people with kids? Yes, I I can't even tell you how many times people have come into my home and say, "Man, your your house is so clean. How do you do this with four children?" And you know, in honesty, my house isn't so clean. It's just not cluttered. Right. And it's it's amazing to me that you know if if I have an unexpected guest, I'm not worried because they come into my home and it's going to be somewhat orderly. You know, my floor might not be mopped, mm. but but I know that I won't have junk lying around. And for my children. Um, they're just taught at a young age that if they take something out, they put it away. And if they don't have a place for it, then we don't need it. So most of the stuff we get is from, you know, birthday parties and Christmas from grandma and grandpa. And once they use it up or stop using it, we sell it or we give it away. 
Um, so we don't have we don't store extra things that they aren't using. We right. keep their we keep their favorite toys. Um, but the good thing about it that I find very liberating is if they break something, I have no hesitation in throwing it away. I don't feel remorse because normally I haven't even purchased the item. Right. I don't put money into it, um, so it's usually a gift. And my kids, I hope that they're gaining a sense of. Um, whatever the opposite of being spoiled is. They don't have excess in toys or clothing. I mean, they have just the right amount. They're right, definitely, right. they definitely don't lack anything. There's nothing that they need, but they don't, you know, every time we go to the store, we don't buy them something. Um, we go to the store when they need something. And uh, when they grow out of something, we give it away or we sell it. Mm, absolutely. So for somebody who's interested in this and, and thinking about like the benefits, both in terms of getting um, some income, like in your case, when you're starting a business, looking at, you know, really how you can make sure that you have give yourself as much of a buffer to, to, to start your business with. And also, if people want to get the freedom from not having clutter around, if they've got um, a garage full of stuff or an attic with boxes in it and, you know, their, their shelves are overflowing and, and so forth what what would you can you give any thoughts about you know how how you even go about getting started with this and, and what what a good way to approach this is um something that i've always used as a rule of thumb if i haven't used it within the last year i am not going to miss it it's not you know my husband who is notorious for throwing things away um he is often asked well don't you miss stuff and he goes in the, in his whole lifetime he probably has regretted throwing something away twice. Right. And, yeah. you know, really, and honestly, how many of us have actually just lost something because we have so much stuff that we don't even know where it is if we went to go look for it? Um, so normally my rule of thumb is if I haven't used it in a year, whether it's clothing or, a to you know, like a toy of some sort or... Um, just anything that, you know, in my kitchen, if I haven't been using it within the last year, it's probably not fitting in my lifestyle currently. Mm. And if I can easily replace it, um, you know, so I have a few things that I wouldn't throw away, like um, my dishes my grandmother gave me. Mm. Um, I, I put them in a special spot, but they are special and I have a place for them. And because they are special, I feel totally fine about them taking up space. But I don't hold on to a lot of other things. I don't collect anything. Um, I, t I tell people, well, I collect money. That's pretty much it. But right. I, I can find a place for that easy. Um, but as far as having some t sort of um, collections or items, you know, I have one bin in my garage for holidays. Um, we try to keep it, whatever we're doing for the holiday new and exciting. And so I might buy something new for the holiday. Um, but usually it's something that is disposable either because it's something like organic, like um, fresh wreaths or fresh garland, something like that, right. um, versus storing something. Because to me, it doesn't make any sense to buy something and then to keep it in my garage for one, one time a year. Mm. I think that's a great rule. I, I, having been traveling for seven and a half months and realizing that I really didn't miss stuff when I was away that that's one of the things that uh, that got me thinking about get, when I got all of, all of my stuff out of storage thinking well you know how much of this do I really need I, I didn't even miss it for seven and a half months so I, I think the one year rule is a is a, a great uh, idea and f so when looking at sort of trying to um, sell stuff that is just taking up space and taking up clutter. Obviously, um, you mentioned Craigslist and then there's uh, eBay and Amazon and other sites. What are your thoughts on, you know, which which sites are best for which types of things? Do you do you have any um, kind of preferences for what you try and get rid of through different different approaches? Yes. Um, so with Craigslist, we've kind of seen, at least in where I have lived and from what I've heard from other people, that it's kind of involved into being maybe too removed from your network of people that you might know and be comfortable in dealing with. And I know for me, it was always meeting in a parking lot somebody somewhere or having my husband go because it was dealing with a man and maybe I don't feel comfortable meeting a man in a parking lot that right. I don't know mm. to make an exchange. And so um, people are very, you know, 
resourceful. And what has happened is people have started these Facebook groups that are yard sales or garage sales on Facebook where they can buy and sell within their neighborhoods. And um, it's basically they just post a picture of it, make a comment on it, telling them how much they want for it. And then people that they know or friends of friends can comment and say, oh, I want to buy that. And then they message each other and work out a time and place. And the thing that's amazing to me is that it takes away that sense of, um, I don't, a, you know, stranger. Usually yeah. the person that you're buying and selling from lives in your neighborhood and you can tell who they're friends with if, mm. they, if you have mutual friends. And so it makes that transaction feel more secure mm. because you actually might know somebody that knows somebody and then all of a sudden it, it doesn't feel so scary. Yeah. yeah. And presumably and so, also you have less transaction cost in terms of, uh, you know, compared to eBay or something, you know, the fees and, and so forth, you know, I guess because it's just a person-to-person a -person exchange. Exactly. And it's, it's really nice to be able to say, oh, um, yeah, I live down the street from you. Can I stop by and see it and see if it'll work out for my needs instead mm. of purchasing, purchasing something online, having it shipped to you? finding out it's not going to work for you and then going through the hassle of returning it. It's, um, you know, very efficient in that aspect. Mm. Um, I started one in my neighborhood. I live in a neighborhood called Aliante and it's part of North Las Vegas. And it's, you know, probably within 10 minutes I could get anywhere within my neighborhood. Mm. Um, so that's very efficient. And there's about a little over 2000 people that are part of my group and, which I, what I love about it is that they're all either people I know or friends of friends. Mm. And so I feel like it's a very connected community and that we're able to, you know, buy and sell very openly and honestly with, you know, maybe there's issues with it, you know, maybe you can fix this item or I might buy something, use it and then resell it because I don't really want to own it. But if I buy it and use it for whatever I need, I bought some stuff for a party that I was hosting, and then I was able to turn around and resell it after the party was over to somebody else that could use it. So it's a fraction of the cost as if I had gone out and bought something new mm. and then had to figure out a place to store it in case maybe I had a party again someday. You know, it really seems more efficient to me as far as, you know, short-term ownership maybe. Yeah. That's really interesting, and I definitely see where you're coming from with the short-term ownership. But just talking about uh, using Facebook and using um, social networks like that, cause I actually was quite surprised reading people who travel a lot um, and who write about how to sell all your stuff before you go um, uh, long-term traveling. One of the things that came up was just how much uh, um, how important it was selling through your kind of your own social networks and your your own friends and uh, a, a couple from England who now travel full time uh, wrote quite an interesting blog post. I'll put it in the show notes where they talk about um, they set up, a, I think, a blog or a website um, and they expected to, to sell a few things to their friends and their sort of friends of friends. And, and it actually turned out to be just as important to them as eBay and, and sort of the other um, sites. And so and I'm, what I'm hearing from you is also that you're finding that the local sort of community person to person type selling is now with social media quite an effective way of getting rid of your stuff. Yeah, exactly. We've had some interesting things happen in the group recently with selling of cars. Um, we've had three different cars sell within the last month and um, two of them were close friends of mine and they both commented, I, one sold it within one day. Wow. Um, and the other one said that they had tried several other outlets but it was within this group that they were able to sell it. And another one commented and said, uh, told me um, it was a friend of theirs that bought it, but their friend had no clue that they were selling it, even though they might have interacted offline until they had posted it online. Oh, you're selling your car? Yeah, I want it. Right. You know, that, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, maybe you would, you, it wouldn't come up in conversation, right? But yeah. when you're connected in a social way online, it, it's kind of, uh, maybe a different interaction that you can experience. Yeah, and it does seem also that in the same way that on eBay you have sort of customer feedback and reviews of, of people who are buying and selling to provide a, a sense of a kind of trust in in how um, sort of trustworthy a particular seller is. The good thing I suppose about Facebook and social media is you, you basically 
you either know the people or you know a whole bunch of people that they know. And that yes. gives you also a sense that, you know, well, okay, they're probably trustworthy because I know a whole bunch of their friends type of thing. Yes, exactly. And there's some social pressure there right. as well, you know, yeah. to act accordingly to because everybody knows you or somebody knows you that's dealing within the group. So it's important to keep, you know, that um, you know, social correctness of, or, or something of that sort. Yeah, that, but, that's actually very helpful because it means that there's a, an, uh, an incentive there for everyone to, you know, to be nice and deal fairly with each other. Yes, correct. And, and I encourage my group, I'm an admin of the group, and so I can message everybody and kind of set rules or guidelines of how the group should be run. Mm. And I encourage everyone to deal with people they know or friends of friends um, for that for that reason, so that people have good experiences, so they don't feel like they're forced to deal with someone that, that they, they don't know if they don't feel comfortable with it. And I have had a really good result from that. That's really cool. And this, I guess, is something that, um, you know, would you suggest that other people uh, look and see if they have communities already set up or just go ahead and set their own one up in their own area? And, and so Yeah, I, both. I would say go, go onto Facebook and you probably, if you have one in your community, you probably have a friend that's already a part of it. So even posting on your uh, on your timeline, hey, is, does anybody know of a yard sale or a garage sale group in this community? They would probably be able to send you to a couple. If there isn't one, then uh, it would be great to create one. I created one, and the way I did it was I basically had another friend that I knew that had lived in the area much longer than I had. And so I asked her to invite all of her friends to the group because she, basically she was a trusted friend of mine and I knew all her friends I would trust. And so I invited the people that I did know. And then I had a friend invite all the people they knew. And then it just grew from there. Cool. Let me ask you about your, your business because I know that your, uh, your entrepreneurial idea is to kind of build off this idea and, and create an app. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Um, so I've created this. Well, we created a team, a, a few friends of mine that we've done some startups in the past together, um, created this team and we call it Share Town. And what we've done is we've made an app for these groups um, because of what it is right now. It's just posting to a wall mm. on Facebook and it's super inefficient. Although it's very effective, it's inefficient. You can't really search for anything. You have to actively be on the wall and see what people are posting mm. to find what they have. So you can't really search for anything. Um, there's just a lot of limitations. So we created an app that integrates with the wall. So when you post something, it actually categorizes it and you can people can search for things later if they're not on the wall all the time. Right. And also it, it shows the distance from the item. So you put in your address, which is completely kept secret. It's just for your benefit. And basically people, when they search for an item, they can see, they can see oh, that item's only a mile away from me. Well, it's, it's a dollar, I'll go pick it up. But yeah. say the item is 15 miles away from them and it's a dollar, they're not really interested in that driving that far yeah it yeah. would cost it would cost more in gas to go pick up the item right. than than what it's really worth and so we've tried to create an app that would basically make this group more efficient that's really cool and is this app um currently available and released or? um right now i just have it with for two groups two groups in las vegas but within this week we're planning on releasing it to all groups who wanted to make sure that we worked out any bugs within our groups that we currently already are at, um, admins for and so uh, it's gone really well it's been really well accepted and uh, people are telling me how much they love it because of the efficiency and so we're going to hopefully this week or next week we'll make it available to any group that wants to use it. Basically a free app that you can use to make your experience more efficient in buying and selling. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure that I put it in the show notes. And, uh, and is there a website that people uh, should go to to yeah. find out more information? Yeah. If you go to sharetown.com, right. you're able to, you're able to uh, basically ac access the, um, the app, the Facebook app, and be able to find any groups that... Uh, you are part of, you can add it to your app. Cool. Great. Well, I, I think that's, that sounds really interesting. And, uh, and I really wish you good luck with uh, going forward with that. Um, to Just to come back to sort of things that people can do, do you still find beyond the social side, which, you know, you obviously found a lot of opportunities there within community selling, do you still find a role for things like eBay and, and Amazon and so forth, like do you, for, for just selling stuff? Sure. You know, there's there's definitely specialty groups out there 
that you might not be able to find something um, that you're trying to buy and in reverse sell. So you mm -hmm. might have some specialty items. Uh, my husband's a Star Wars collector. And so when he went to sell some of his Star Wars figures, you know, you can't really sell them locally because mm. it's maybe difficult to find someone that's looking for a specific item. So I think for maybe broader um, areas that you're looking to sell, maybe more specialty items, I think there's, you know, definitely a place for it, mm. for sure. Mm. And what are your views of the advantages and disadvantages of, uh, of, of the different ones around? Because it seems to me that, you know, Amazon's really most useful for getting rid of things like um, books and DVDs and mm -hmm. very sort of very clear specific items that are already all of the information's already listed in there. Whereas eBay, you know, maybe more for kind of secondhand uh, clothes and, and things like that. Yeah, I I totally agree. I what what's been interesting because of these uh, Facebook groups that I've been able to notice, and um, we've also been able to really like survey the groups, ask them questions, ask what they like, what they don't like, what they wish could be improved in the groups. And, you know, there's the basic demographic of these groups are people like me, um, stay at home moms or, um, you know, people that have are on social media. And so there's a lot of clothing that's being sold and a lot of children's items, you know, things that basically people my age um, or in my demographic would use. Mm. And so I see the benefit of that, you know, basically going there and because it would be a very quick and easy and seamless sell to be able to just post it on there, have a neighbor come pick it up. But mm. there's going to be, you know, things like uh, maybe books or something that might not sell so well. So Amazon and like the whole, I know that you have been talking about getting rid of your uh, CDs. Yeah. And, you know, th there's a place that you could sell everything as a lot, right? You could mm. just sell your group of, of uh, your collection. And that's something that I see done a lot is selling things as a collection or as a group because it's much more efficient mm. than going on and listing each item individually. Right. And uh, so that's something I recommend. You know, with both Amazon and eBay, there's challenges with, um, you know, the fees that are charged. Mm. And so by the time you, like, I, I believe with eBay, you get charged whether something sells or not. And so. Yeah, if you it's know. not a zero insertion, they have zero insertion weekends where you get, but you have to um, set the price at uh, really low in order to, to do that and so forth. So, yeah, it really is interesting hearing about the, the sort of the, the way that you've uh, managed to get so much out of local community selling, because uh, it's definitely, I think, something that's now much more of an opportunity. Yeah. And I wonder if you, you know, just looking at the, the whole process uh, for someone who's thinking about doing this, on the financial side, in terms of, I guess the question, like, is it worth it? And, and uh, is it worth decluttering? And I, I think for me, certainly, uh, so far, it's absolutely worth it. Because both because of the, you know, the opportunity to really ma maximize the your financial freedom and make sure you don't have stuff that you just don't need. And also for the reason that you mentioned that you just have a much greater sense of freedom. But what would you say in terms of, you know, the sort of question, like, is it really worth my time going through and, and uh, you know, trying to organize reselling stuff? You know, it, I guess it would come up to the individual. Maybe somebody's time is too valuable and they don't feel like they have the energy to do that. And I, mm. and I get that, right? So, mm. you know, we're each in different spaces in our life that maybe that's not for that person at the time. But I know for um, at least stay-at-home moms, it's totally worth it because they feel like they can contribute to the family in some way. I live in a community that has a lot of, lot of large families, you know, um, four to five children, which is, mm. is, is, is quite large. And so if there's any way to stretch the dollar, especially if the mother isn't uh, maybe contributing financially, it's a way for her to save money or to make some extra money on the side for, for their family. And I feel like that that is very worth it as far as keeping things minimalized, using what they have and, you know, buying and selling in this very like, micro local community type mm. setting. You know, it, it really has because it doesn't take as much time because they can post a few things. Someone can come, you know, what we've been doing now is we just set it on the porch with a little note. So when they can, they drive by and they pick it up, you know, mm. and they leave, leave the money in a little envelope and slide it under the door. You know, it's just 
one of those transactions that are that has been created so that um, maybe that you know individual that it's worth it for them because it, it makes sense in their lifestyle. Now, if you're working a lot of hours and you have the extra money and you have the extra space, you know, it might not make, make sense right now to declutter. But if you like to travel like you do mm. and you, you don't really want to keep a home just to keep stuff in it, um, you know, it, that makes complete sense to me. I know in Las Vegas, um, it's a very weird phenomenon, but we have, it's basically a valley and you can see land as, as far as the eye can see. It's beautiful, um, but we all live in these little lots with little houses right. and there's not a lot of storage space. It's not, you know, a big ranch or a big, you know, most people have a two car garage and that's their storage. They don't really have any storage within their home. There's no basements here. People can't dig into the ground because it's too hard. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have a situation where basically um, there's not a lot of extra space. So it makes sense for people here to do this. Um, I know in most urban areas, there isn't a lot of extra space mm -hmm. in, their, in the living space. And so this buying and selling at very micro level communities you know, is a is I I think it makes sense mostly for them. You know, if you live somewhere in maybe in the Midwest and you have a large home and you have a lot of extra income and you have the place to put it, um, you know, maybe decluttering isn't on the top of their priority. Yeah. But yeah. you know, as as a sense of personal freedom, I would highly encourage it because it's so nice to be able to feel like, you know, if I'm going to do a day of spring cleaning in my house, it doesn't really involves decluttering. It really involves cleaning. And I'm not having to go through endless papers or endless items. Once something comes in my home and I use it, then I usually get rid of it after I'm done. It's not, I don't, you know, pile things up for months and months and then get rid of it. I get rid of it as needed. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that psychological benefit um, that you talk about in terms of, of just uh, giving you more well also physical space in 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 your house but also stuff that you don't no longer have to maintain and and find a place for and look after i find that enormously freeing and i, I think that it's it's also nice to know even when i'm selling stuff at the moment even if i'm not getting a huge amount for it there it's it's kind of nice to know that somebody else is going to use this book and somebody else is going to get some value out of 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 um, things that still are, do have value in them, you know. I, I, I feel really good about the fact that it, it's not necessarily bringing a huge amount of income, but it brings me some income and it means that these things are still be, being useful to somebody. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's the other thing is that you don't have to necessarily sell the items. You can give them away. And that happens all the time in these groups. People just say, well, I have this. I'd really like someone to get some use out of it. Or... I have an item that I don't want to pay to fix. If someone wants to come pick it up for free and figure out a way to fix it, then you know the problem is solved. So I think I think that's you know one of the benefits is finding people that can find what you have useful, even if you're not making money. We don't want to throw things away. I mean, if someone can still get some use out of it, you should find an owner for that item. Absolutely, and I think that's actually a really, a really uh, another really good part of the decluttering is that um, it's, it's, it's nice to just get rid of stuff and know that it's kind of gone to another home and somebody else is, is finding it useful. And we, I'm sure you probably have similar things here, but we also have various um, services that will come and collect furniture that you no longer want. And, it, you know, it, they'll effectively sell it cheap, and, and, but they'll collect it for free for you. And, and um, so you don't make any money out of it, but um, it, at least it's kind of still being used. And I think those, those are uh, more other opportunities for... Uh, decluttering and, and for your stuff to find a use, uh, a use in someone else's home. Yeah, correct. Uh, we have, um, you know, little businesses that that thrive off of that. And basically, if you don't feel like going through the process of selling all of your items, you can put them all in your vehicle and drive them down there and drop them off. And, you know, they're able to sustain a business and hire people and people that might not be able to afford something new can go there and get a good quality item. You know, I think there's a lot of avenues that people can use to feel good about decluttering. Not only are they getting it out of their home, but they're helping other people. And I, and I think that is a great feeling that you can have too, of serving your community. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I think that's uh, really helpful and, and gives people uh, lots of ideas to, to get going. Um, so once again, your website is sharetown.com. Is that right? Cor- correct. Yes. Perfect. Thanks so much for being on the show, Georgia. Thanks so much, Jake. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.